Coming up today on That LTD Life, I'm gonna show you how to rank on Google. Well, maybe not rank, but at least get indexed on Google. They'll know you exist, you can be sure of that. But actually being ranked, that, that's a whole other story. So what we're looking at is something called Warp Index, and its entire job is to tell Google about the changes, updates, added pages, removed pages from your website so that Google at least knows what's going on. And if you're a good fit for a search query, then they have the opportunity to present your site. They don't know you exist, you can't get ranked anywhere. So here is Warp Index. Now this might sound a little bit like deja vu because I recently reviewed a tool like as of maybe two weeks ago called URL Monitor. And you can see that URL Monitor is going away from AppSumo, it ends in six days. It's also more expensive. $69 was tier one of URL Monitor, whereas Warp Index tier one is just 29 bucks. It's, it's basically free money, it's $40 less. Well, hold on, there's a reason for that. Now I'm gonna get into actually using this app here in a second, but we need to break down these plans because it's actually pretty interesting. With Warp Index, we get two websites and 200 requests per day. Now what's a request? That's a page that is updated that it's going to send to Google and let them know there's been a change. So you need to think about how many sites you're gonna be managing, how many updates you need per day, and then make sure your plan accommodates for that. Now for me, 200 is plenty, but some people make 200 brand new pages every single day and they might update others. I mean, have you seen the web lately? AI content, that's why everything sucks, but that's a story for another time. URL monitor, on the other hand, go down to the plans and pricing here, on their lowest tier, we get five websites and 500 pages submitted each day. You need to go up to at least tier two of the other tool, Warp Index, to come close here. Five websites, only 400 requests per day. So on the surface, Warp Index looks cheaper, but if you need five sites and five sites exactly, well, it actually is a little bit more expensive. But hold on, that only lasts for a moment. If you need more than five sites, then once again, Warp Index becomes cheaper. We have a tier three plan here with 25 sites for 199, but more kind of a closer comparison would be tier four, 75 sites, 3,600 requests per day, 399, compared to tier three of URL monitor, only 50 sites. Remember uh, the other tool, Warp Index was 75 sites and then 2,000 submissions per day versus 3,600 per day. So boy, when it comes down to it, just pick the tool that you like best. I have a full length review of URL monitor. So continue watching this video, go check out that one. And if there's still time, pick whatever one you like. If you need one, if you don't, then just hold on to your money, it's okay. All right, enough fussing about, I've got my code here. I bought a tier one, the $29 code. I'm gonna go ahead and set up Google Search Console. Now, in the URL Monitor video, I gave a brief explanation of what Google Search Console is. So again, go check that out if you wanna know all of the details. But essentially, Google Search Console is your window into Google to see what it knows about your website. It's kind of the opposite of Google Analytics. Google Analytics, you're telling everything about your website. With Google Search Console, it's telling you what it knows about you. So it's very helpful, and it's kind of the opposite of being anti-privacy. So. Use this even if you don't like Google otherwise. That's the bottom line. So what we need to do here is connect up our Google Search Console account. I'll click this button. It's gonna take me over to the regular Google login screen. And then I need to give access to Warp Index, which I'm going to do here. I'll hit continue. And now my Google Search Console is connected up to my Warp Index account. Next, I need to choose which website I want to use with Warp Index. So these are going to come from Google Search Console, meaning you need to connect up your site on Google Search Console first and then come back to Warp Index. Then you can click Import Website. You'll choose your Google Search Console account. Kind of a hint there, you can connect multiple Search Console accounts. So you're not stuck with just one. And then you'll choose your website. So here is mine, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit Add. Now, quick tip here. Hopefully this helps at least one person out there. The first time I connected up my Google Search Console account, there was a checkbox I had to click, which I didn't do. It made it look like everything was working. And in fact, Warp Index itself, if I go under Settings here, it even said under Google Search Console that it was a healthy connection, but I didn't check one of the boxes. So make sure that you're going through the authentication process with Google Search Console very slowly, making sure you grant all of the permissions necessary because Warp Index won't actually tell you if you've done something wrong. It'll just look like everything's right and you won't be able to connect your site and you'll sit at your screen for 15 minutes wondering what you did wrong. 
All right, so back over to our setup process. I gotta say, I do like this user interface. I haven't mentioned that so far, but it's nice and clean and simple and modern. And uh, I like that it's not trying to do too much here. So next I need to add a Google service account. This is essentially where Warp Index is going to connect up to Google Cloud in some format and then allow it to act as an administrator on your account. Don't worry, it's not gonna be that scary. And it'll be the one that actually updates the URLs. Here, I'll show you what I mean. It's easier to just see than it is to understand. So add service account. And here is the Warp Index email address. Now notice this is a G service account. That means it's from Google Cloud. So it's not gonna be like some, it's not like Jim in Ohio, sorry Jim, uh, who's like, you know, logging in, checking your website. Now this is a, a bot that's essentially doing the work for us. Now, if you had a larger plan, you'd actually have multiple email addresses here because each email address is limited to just 200 instances. So that's why it's 200, 400, everything's in multiples of 200. Okay, so we copy this email address and then we go over to Search Console and then under settings, we're gonna add a user here. And you can see I already did this for a URL monitor. These are the email addresses that they gave me. So let's go ahead and add a user here for Warp Index. We'll just paste in the address. And then typically you need to make this an owner account. You, setting it as full is not going to be enough. Yeah, and they do specify that inside of their directions. Add the copied email address as owner user. They should probably make that bold or really stand out because I think people will probably miss it. Okay, so back over in GSC as Warp Index calls it. I've never heard another human say that, but I've now added my user. I can go back over to Warp Index and hit verify and connect. And it's going to start indexing. It says, set up your sitemap to put your website indexing on autopilot. All right, let's set up the sitemap. Now I've already added my sitemap to Google Search Console and it just pulled it in automatically on Warp Index. If you're not sure how to do that on Google Search Console, just go over to sitemaps here and then enter in the URL of your sitemap. Usually it's going to just be yourwebsite.com slash sitemap.xml. So you can see my URL right here, even though it's broken by the uh, line break here. This is Google, like why don't they have better formatting for a website? Like they know that a website's gonna go in here. I just, I don't understand their design sometimes. You'd think the biggest company on the internet would be like at least decent at user interface. All right, so let's break down what Warp Index is telling me. We've got our sitemap URL. It found 33 pages. I can turn on auto indexing, which I want to do. So it says auto indexing is enabled. And what this means is it's going to automatically keep track of my website as I make changes to it. It's going to update that and then send that information over to Google. And I can see it last scanned the site one minute ago. Okay, so great. That's basically it. I'm done here. You can see it's got 33 pages. It's going to make sure that all of these are indexed and the status here is indexed. Oh, there's a couple that are crawled but not indexed, which is the newsletter sign up and a welcome page. All right, so I'm gonna set the rows per page to be a bigger number here. Let's do 50, we should see the whole site then. All right, so there's just a few pages that have not been indexed. I'm not really sure why that is, but it gives me clues, something to go investigate and find out. There is some search here, so if you wanted to find a particular page to find out if it had been indexed, I could you know, type in home. Updates instantly here, that was a very fast search. Uh, I can also sort by status. So if I wanna find those ones that have been crawled but not uh, indexed, I could go ahead and find that listing here. There's a lot. It might be better to have an option to say, you know, everything that's not indexed. That would be, that'd be cool. They should make that an option. Then I've got a view listing over here where I can see uh, the status, the URL and the title. So if I wanted to trim this up a little bit, I could, uh, it doesn't seem very necessary. Probably just leave everything on. The one thing that's throwing me off about this UI is why are there checkboxes here? I don't think I can do anything with them. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know, there's checkboxes. There's no options attached to that, which I don't think there should be. It's just an overview of what's going on with my site, whether or not it's been reported to Google. So we're in this overview screen here, right? We can go over to bulk indexing where if we want to configure certain URLs to be indexed, we could do that. Right now it's using that sitemap, so they don't really need to do anything, but I could just provide a URL list if I you know, didn't have a sitemap or maybe I just added a page and I wanna make sure it gets updated. I could just add it in right here and then submit it right away over to Google. Same thing might go for de-indexing. Maybe you need to take a page off of your site. You could add that to the sitemap or you could update a URL list and then you'd be removing it from Google. So it's not gonna give any errors about you know, a page that no longer exists. 
Then over here, we've got a setup tab where you can just see our connected accounts and the sitemaps that we're using. If you need to add an additional sitemap, there's a button to do that, which is really cool because then we can also submit it to Google Search Console. That was something that did not exist in URL Monitor. You needed to know to add it to, basically it was kind of confusing setting up the URL Monitor compared to how easy it's been with Warp Index. So personally, if I'm debating between these two tools, right away, Warp Index is the one I'm gonna go with. Now I need to get on my soapbox here for a minute because I know that a lot of people complained in the URL monitor video that this tool is silly, you don't need it, it's redundant, and you didn't need to worry about Google anymore because SEO is dead. That's definitely not the case. I know AI is on the rise, but we have to live right now and people are definitely still Googling things. We want Google to know about our website. Now, before you rush into buying a tool like Warp Index or URL Monitor, I do wanna tell you that you might already have a tool that can do this in your arsenal. A lot of WordPress SEO plugins can do this already for no extra cost. They are a little bit more difficult to set up because you actually need to do that setup process where you get the email address. You have to create that inside of the Google Cloud Console and it's kind of tedious and it takes a little while. If that stuff intimidates you, 29 bucks might just be enough that you don't ever want to worry about it. But if you know how to do that stuff, it's you know definitely worth setting it up and just having it all built right into your WordPress site. But maybe you don't use WordPress, so there's a lot of reasons to check out a tool like this. And it's for $29, I mean, yeah, it's probably worth it for most people. So it's time for me to give Warp Index a score. And I was just checking my records because I wanna make sure that I score it higher than URL Monitor. Turns out I didn't give URL Monitor a score, at least not that I could find anywhere. So I'm gonna give URL Monitor a 6.8, and I'm gonna give Warp Index a 7.1. It's just a little bit better. I think it's a lot more ready for prime time, if I'm honest, than URL Monitor is. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you like any of the tools mentioned, I've got links down below for AppSumo. You can buy anything on AppSumo and it helps support this channel. I've also got clientamp.com. There's full length AI summaries. Remember I was complaining about AI content? Well, I am also to blame. I've got full length summaries of these videos generated by AI. And just click the link down below for clientamp.com, get signed up for the free email newsletter, and even consider working with me personally to grow your online business. That's gonna do it for this video. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching. I'm Dave Swift, and I'll see you in the next review.